Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll go through a paper that reviews the cardioprotective effects of NMN. It's good to see a review of many human and animal model science studies showing the positive effects of NMN on cardio aging. First a disclaimer, that in this video we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. Nicotinamide mononucleotide, an emerging nutraceutical against cardiac aging. NAD is essential for many cellular processes. And NAD declines with age, and particularly in the heart, this is associated with the aging of the tissue. NMN is a possible NAD precursor, which can alleviate these age-related heart diseases by improving the NAD levels. Preclinical results, mostly in mice, have been encouraging, including cardioprotective results without significant side effects. There are also strategies for improving the effectiveness of NMN being investigated. This review summarizes the potential for NMN to protect against heart aging. Decrease of NAD levels in the heart contribute to changes in a variety of cellular processes, including mitochondrial dysfunction, DNA damage repair, decreased enzyme activity, altered gene expression, and altered intracellular signaling pathways, all of which are closely related to cardiac aging. When taking NMN orally, how does this affect the NAD levels in the cells? The most important way that NAD is made is through the salvage pathway when nicotinamide or NAM is converted back to NAD via NMN. NMN, which is taken as a supplement, can get into the cell via NR or nicotinamide riboside. In this case, NMN is converted to NR by CD73, then transported across the cell membrane and converted back to NMN by the NRK enzymes and can then enter the salvage pathway. The step that controls how fast the salvage pathway works, also called the rate limiting step, is the one from nicotinamide to NMN. So NMN will bypass this step and quickly be converted to NAD. NMN can also directly enter the cell via a transporter, SLC12A8. This transporter is plentiful in the gut, but it is not clear how important it is in other areas of the body. Another form of NMN, the reduced form, NMNH, has a different pathway, either being converted to NRH or directly entering the cell and then being converted to NADH, the reduced form of NAD. In terms of how NAD levels are reduced, the major consumers of NAD are the PARPs, CD38, and the sirtuins, which convert NAD to nicotinamide, which then needs to be recovered by the salvage pathway. What are the physiological effects that have been seen in NMN trials? It has been shown in humans that oral NMN does increase the metabolites in the blood 30 minutes after being taken, with a peak at 300 minutes. After taking NMN for 10 weeks, the NAD levels of peripheral mononuclear blood cells was increased. However, how NMN is metabolized in humans needs further investigation. There are some clinical trials looking at this currently. Here are two of them. They are both being run by Senec, a European manufacturer of NMN. And both are looking at the pharmacodynamics and effects of NMN on healthy adults. Both of these are scheduled to finish later this year, and it will be interesting to see the results of these studies. Turning to preclinical trials, NMN has been used in a number of these and shown to effectively restore homeostasis of the NAD pool in the heart by increasing NAD levels or accelerating NAD plus turnover. I won't go through the animal studies in detail, but the conclusion was that the evidence points to oral NMN increasing NAD levels or increasing the NAD turnover, which ameliorate heart dysfunction. In another clinical trial, NMN supplementation for 10 weeks increased NAD turnover in the muscles and insulin sensitivity, but did not increase the NAD levels. However, in mouse models, it has been shown to significantly increase NAD levels in the liver, kidney, and aorta, implying that it has different effects in different tissues. 
In their summary for this section, the authors conclude that the results from animal models do warrant further clinical studies to see if NMN is protective of the heart and has anti-aging effects. So the next question is what about the safety of NMN? So far, no significant side effects have been reported. Even for very large doses of up to 2,680 milligrams per kilogram per day have not shown any significant side effects in mouse models. In humans, this would be the equivalent of about 220 milligrams per kilogram. So for a 75 kilogram person, this would be about 16 grams. Another study showed no toxicity for rats at 1500 milligrams per kilogram for up to 90 days. There have been human studies with NMN, and particularly one in Japan looked at safety and saw no ill effects from any single dose up to 500 milligrams. But they do say more studies are needed, especially for the effects of long-term continuous administration. One concern that has been raised, which is controversial, is whether NMN by boosting NAD levels may stimulate tumor growth. The effects that make NMN protective of the heart may make it supportive of tumor cells. And some anti-cancer drugs work by blocking the NAD salvage pathway, and NMN, by boosting NAD, may bypass this. However, there is also evidence that boosting NAD can inhibit tumor growth. As they say, more investigation is needed. The bioavailability of NMN and how it can get across the cell membrane to boost the intracellular NAD is a topic of continuing investigation. So finding formats of NMN which more effectively get NMN into cells is important, as well as how it can enhance the action of other drugs. NMN delivery can be enhanced with the use of quantum dots, nanoparticles to which NMN is attached. We covered this in one of our earlier videos. They do not mention it in the paper, but I would include liposomes as another novel method of delivery that may increase the bioavailability of NMN. In the summary, the authors say that a systematic evaluation of the various NAD boosters, such as NMN, NR, and NMNH, should be conducted. NMN and NR have already been shown to have therapeutic effects. The study of dihydronicotinamide mononucleotide or NMNH, the reduced form of NMN, is currently in its infancy, but it has shown a remarkable ability to boost NAD and so looks very promising. They finish with the caution that more studies need to be done to determine the long-term effects of NMN. It's good to see that there are clinical studies looking at NMN, as in the two that were covered earlier, but there is still a lot that needs to be understood. We are taking NMN. For me personally, this is 500 milligrams of liposomal NMN a day.